Welcome to Lumina. Today we're going to be going over the Plainfield Ghoul, the case that influenced the creation of several fictional serial killers such as Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Norman Bates from Psycho, and Buffalo Bill from The Silence of the Lambs. Edward Theodore Dean was born on the 27th of August, 1906, in La Crosse County, Wisconsin, to George and Augusta Dean. Augusta was a small grocery store owner and eventually purchased a farm on the outskirts of Plainfield, which then became the Keene family permanent home. George was an alcoholic that didn't help his family in any way, and Augusta, being a heavily religious woman, viewed him as a lazy man, unworthy of raising their kids. She took it upon herself to raise and financially support both her kids as well as force her strong beliefs onto them. While growing up, Augusta also preached to her boys the innate immorality of the world, the evil of drinking, and the belief that all women, excluding herself, were prostitutes and instruments of the devil. Ed and his older brother, Henry George Gein, were allowed to leave their house solely to go to school, and due to having an effeminate demeanor, Ed became an easy target for bullies. Ed was a shy kid with poor social skills, and to make matters worse, his mother scolded him whenever he tried to make friends. During his teens and throughout his early adulthood, Ed and Henry remained detached from people outside of their farmstead, only having each other for company. Augusta would reserve time every afternoon to read to them from the Bible, usually from the Old Testament, dealing with death, murder, and divine retribution. She also often abused both her sons, believing that they were destined to become failures like their father. On the 1st of April, 1940, George passed away from a heart attack. It was after this that Ed and Henry started becoming part of the community. Henry began to reject his mother's views on the world and spoke ill of her around Ed, worried about his attachment to her. On the 16th of May, 1944, a fire burned close to the Gain farm. Allegedly, Ed and Henry went out to extinguish it. As the night continued, the brothers got separated and Ed lost sight of Henry. Once the fire was finally extinguished, Ed reported his missing brother to the police. They immediately organized a search party and were ready to start looking for Henry. However, before they even began, Ed led them directly to Henry's body, which laid on the ground untouched by the fire. The coroner listed Henry's death as death by asphyxiation, disregarding the bruises they found on his head. Ed spent his whole life trying to make his mother happy, but she was rarely pleased with her boys. On the 29th of December, 1945, after developing cancer and a series of strokes, Augusta, Ed's mother, passed away. Ed became increasingly deranged and picked up a serious drinking problem. He remained on the farm, supporting himself and boarding up rooms his mother frequently stayed in, leaving them untouched. All but a small room next to the kitchen, which is where he decided to start staying in. Shortly after his mother's death, Ed decided he wanted a sex change and began to create a woman's suit so he could pretend to be a female. On the 16th of November, 1957, hardware store owner Bernice Warden disappeared, and police had reason to suspect Ed. Bernice's son had told investigators that Ed had been in the store the evening before the disappearance, saying he would return the following morning for a gallon of antifreeze. A cell slip for a gallon of antifreeze was the last receipt written by Bernice on the morning she disappeared, found on the floor near a trail of blood and a missing cash till. Once officials had enough evidence, they obtained the search warrant and headed to the Gein farmhouse. Upon arrival, Sheriff Schley stumbled across Bernice's decapitated, disemboweled body hanging upside down from the ceiling beam. She had ropes at her wrist with a crossbar at her ankles and her torso dressed out like that of a deer. Police found her head in a burlap sack in another part of the house. They then noticed Bernice had been shot on the head with a 22 caliber rifle. Nails had been hammered through each ear and then tied together with twine. As authorities continued to search the house, they found four noses, fragments and whole human bones, nine masks of human skin, bowls made from human skulls, ten female heads with tops sawed off, human skin covering several chair seats, Mary Hogan's head in the paper bag, nine vulvas in a shoebox, skulls on his bedposts, organs in the refrigerator, a pair of lips on a drawstring for a window shade, a belt made from human female nipples, a lampshade made from the skin of a human face, and a shirt made of human skin complete with a pair of breasts. 
Ed was taken to the county jailhouse for questioning. This is where he confessed to the investigators that between 1947 and 1952, him and a friend named Gus made as many as 40 nocturnal visits to three local graveyards to exhume recently buried bodies where he was in a daze-like state. On about 30 of those visits, he claimed he left the grave empty-handed. On the other occasions, he dug up the graves of recently buried middle-aged women he thought resembled his mother and took the bodies home. Ed admitted to robbing nine graves, leading investigators to their location. He also admitted to not having intercourse with the corpses due to the smell being too much to handle. Ed began killing when Gus moved to an old people's home and was unable to carry out his nocturnal exertions alone. During the interrogation, Ed admitted to shooting Mary Hogan to death with a 32 Mauser pistol, a tavern operator missing since the 8th of December 1954. Detectives suspected Ed was responsible for four other murders dating back to 1947 that took place in central Wisconsin but couldn't get a confession or tie any evidence to him. County Sheriff Arthur Schley allegedly physically assaulted Ed during questioning by banging his head and face into a brick wall, causing Ed Initial's confession to be ruled inadmissible. On the 21st of November, 1957, Ed was arraigned on one count of first-degree murder where he entered a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity. Found mentally incompetent and unfit to stand trial, Ed was sent to the Central State Hospital for the Criminally Insane and later transferred to the Mendota State Hospital in Madison, Wisconsin. Psychologists and psychiatrists who interviewed him asserted that he was schizophrenic and a sexual psychopath. In 1968, Ed's doctor determined he was sane enough to stand trial. The trial began on the 14th of November, lasting one week. He was found guilty of first-degree murder by Judge Robert Golmar, who stated, Due to prohibitive costs, Gain was tried for only one murder, that of Mrs. Warden. However, because Ed was found to have been insane at the time of the killing, he was later found not guilty by reason of insanity and acquitted. He then spent the rest of his life in the Central State Hospital for the criminally insane. On the 20th of March, 1958, the Keaton farmhouse was burnt down, and when Ed was informed, he simply shrugged and said, just as well. Within the same year, Ed's 1949 Ford sedan was sold in public auction for 760 to a carnival sideshow operator, who placed a vehicle in display under a banner stating, Come and see the ghoul car which Ed Gein transported his victims in. On the 26th of July, 1984, Ed died of respiratory and heart failure due to cancer in the Mendota Mental Health Institute. He was buried in Plainfield Cemetery, right next to his mother, only yards from the graves he had robbed 30 years earlier. Ironically, vandals desecrated Ed's grave. His gravestone was later restored and placed in the museum in Washera County. The chilling story of Ed Gein continues to be told through our music, movies, and literature. Thank you for watching today's episode. If you guys liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.